Hi, Oli Hercules here. Welcome to the food that makes us recipes that comfort and connect us. And today, by popular demand, I'm going to show you how to make green borscht, which is not really a borscht in the way that we know it. It doesn't have beetroot in, it's actually kind of like a spring sorrel soup. Sorrel is one of the main ingredients, we're going to go and pick some from the garden in a second, but meanwhile I'll just quickly show you how to make the stock for it, which is one of the most important kind of like components, but it's very simple to make. So for the meat version we're going to make both veggie for Joe and a meat one for us. I've got some chicken wings, they're organic chicken wings, they weren't very expensive and you know I've got like six pieces here and that's what I'm literally going to use but you can use a whole chicken or chicken bones. I feel like for the spring and lightness of it chicken works really well although I must say duck is very good too. So this is it, I'm literally just putting chicken wings in and one whole peeled onion. You don't really need to put uh, all of the vegetables in at this point because we're going to do our Ukrainian smazhnya which is like the Ukrainian sofrito and we'll add all of the vegetable flavors into the stock after so for now it's just meat, onion, a little bay leaf and I'm going to fill this up with cold water for now and put a little pinch of salt just so the meat uh, is really nicely seasoned as well at the end of it. Okay welcome to my slightly messy uh, overgrown garden, don't judge me. Uh, sorrel. I've planted a couple of... Um, I planted it from seed actually. I grew it two years ago indoor until I get, got little plants like this and then I've just stuck them in here and then it's self-seeded and went all the way there, look. And now I've got... Oh, it's a little bit over now, but it's bolting actually, but the leaves are still good. So it's like a weed. Once it kind of settles in, and it's all year round. I, I was using it in winter as well, so it's really easy to plant and grow if you get an opportunity. And we use it in quite a few um, things actually uh, in my house. And in Ukraine we mainly use it for the green borscht. So I'm just going to pick some leaves here. Okay, so chicken wings, one bay leaf, one whole onion, put that in and just let it bubble for, I don't know, 30-40 minutes. I think the chicken wings should be like nice and falling apart a little bit, falling off the bone. Uh, if not, just wait until that moment, so maybe, you know, bring it up to, I don't know, 50 or minutes or an hour. And I'm going to quickly show you how to make a vegetable stock, which is very easy. Okay, this is how my vegetarian husband Joe makes his vegetable stock. It's really easy. It's almost like making a vegetable tea. So it's um, little bits of chopped stuff that I've saved from my other jobs that I did today. Some carrots and some bits of shallot. I'm going to put a quartered onion in it. I'll get rid of this very dry end of celery, but then I'm just literally just going to put this in, which I've washed. And maybe, you know, if you have leeks or something, or I have this fennel. Yeah, so as I say, if you have leeks, just wash them really, really well. And you can add them in as well, including the green part. So here we are, just like that. And then I'll put some water over it. Let it bubble for about 15 minutes at a simmer. Switch it off and then just leave it there to steep. And so the vegetables give their flavor to the water. So we've got all of our bits of vegetables here. I'm just going to put some cold water over it enough to cover. A pinch of salt. We're going to bring it to a simmer, cook for 15 minutes, then switch it off and just leave it to stand for a bit. And then it will be super nice and flavorsome. Okay, green borscht. We've got the veggie stock here on the left and it's been 15-20 minutes. So I'm just going to switch it off and just, just leave it there for a bit. And then afterwards I'm just going to strain uh, these vegetables out because they would have given all of the flavour that I need for this. And then our meat stock. Uh, you know, it's not giving off too much scum, but there is still a little bit so I'm just going to 
collect it with a spoon and just throw it out. I'm just going to put it in the bowl and then I'm going to chuck it after. Uh, if you're using a whole chicken, there might be more blood there, so then you'll have a lot more of the scum. So just make sure that you skim it off the top of the stock and yeah, you're good. We're, we're getting there. This is going to be done very soon. So for the green borscht, we're going to do a Ukrainian sofrito, which we call smazhnya, which is literally frying. It means frying, smazhnya. And we've got a um, shallot. And I've got some carrots, I'm going to dice the shallot and then I'm going to grate the carrots. We're going to caramelize them in a little bit of oil and then I'm going to divide it between the veggie and the meat uh, borscht and it's going to add sweetness. And then we're going to have the freshness of dill and a little bit of a spiky bite from the wild garlic and spring onions and then the sourness of sorrel, everything is just going to come together into this really beautiful, delicious thing. So, you may have seen me do this before. This is just dicing our shallot for the sofrito, for the smazhnya. Uh, these can be really rather annoying, these little paper skins. Just take them off, just like that. And then to dice, we're just going to go lengthways and then once like that and then and for the carrots you can do it on the rough side of the grater or you can do it on a kind of like on the fine side of the grater on the fine side of, of the grater the the carrots will kind of like dissolve a little bit and you won't get the pieces of it but it will give your borscht a lovely golden hue which will then be reinforced by all of the green and it's going to be really pretty so I'm just going to do that today so I'm just going to do it on this side of the grater I'll show you what it looks like so something like that, so still pieces but you know kind of like finely grated but if you want actual chunks of carrot you can do it on this side or you can even, you know, cut, cut it. But this way you're going to get more of that sweetness that I want to counterbalance the sourness of the sorrel. Okay, just a bit of oil for the sofrito. I'm putting oil in uh, because I'm going to use it for both the veggie and the chicken borscht. But if I'm just making a meat one and if there is enough of fat kind of floating around the meat stock, I would just skim it off with a um, ladle and I'd use that to fry my onion in just so you don't have to add like any other extra fat or whatever. So onions in. As always, a pinch of salt, lower it and then just coat them in the oil and then you don't want them to burn or become brown really you just want to soften them let me take these little papery skins out get rid of those and then just gently and as always if they become a bit dry you can add little splashes of uh, water or of the vegetable stock just to lift those caramelized bits from the bottom of the pan Okay, whilst this is happening, I'm going to finish the carrots and finish the rest of the prep and we're almost done with our green borscht. I forgot to mention the potatoes. Of course we need the humble potato in the green borscht as well. My mom would definitely, definitely peel the whole potato and cube it or, and, you know, use it like that. But A, I am too lazy and B, these are organic potatoes and I want the nutrients that are in the skin. So I've just taken like the little eyes and blemishes out, but I've, I've kept the skins on. And then I'm just going to cut it in half and if it's small, you know, maybe just do pieces like this. But you can cube it smaller or, but I think this is, this is quite a good size. So just kind of into chunks. Okay, this is our carrot and I'm just gonna stick it in with the onion. Mix it through, here it's sizzle. And I'm just going to cook it for another five, seven minutes on a low heat, medium low heat. 
and then we're going to divide it. Some of it will go into the chicken broth and some of it will go into the veg broth. But, you know, if you're making one or the other, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit more or a little bit less. I chopped my potatoes. I'm not ready to put them in just yet, so I've just put them in some water so they don't oxidize and become grey. And then I'm just going to finish chopping everything and then we're pretty much ready to finish the Porsche. So I've got spring onions and if one of them is, you know, if they're, if they're a little bit fat, I would just slice it lengthways and then just slice through them. And you can add, you know, if you love spring onions, you can add more than what I'm doing here. My green parts were a little bit tired, so I, I chopped them off. But if yours are nice and vibrant, then please, please do use them. All right, so my spring onions are done, and then I'm going to do my wild garlic, and then the sorrel, and then the dill, and we're good to go. So. If you froze your wild garlic, just let it thaw for a second and then just chop through it like this and it'll be absolutely fine. So, green borscht has been so important, I don't know, at least in, in, in my family, that my grandmother used to make these special green borscht herb kind of preserves, so she would grab a bunch of sorrel, a bunch of dill, um, what else was there, like spring onion, whatever, would chop it up, uh, up into kind of like big chunks, layer it between salt and put it in a jar in the cellar. And it would kind of like ever so slightly ferment, but it will be preserved for winter and then you would just take a little bit of it and add it to your borscht to make green borscht in winter. Just a little tip in case you have all of these, especially if you grow all of these things at home and they're really, really delicious. So that's my got wild garlic, uh, that's my spring onion, and that's the sorrel from my garden. And I'm go I am going to uh, chop the stalk and together, because they're a little bit tougher than the leaves. And I'm going to add them to my wild garlic and we'll cook them together. And then the leaves I'm going to slice and put into each serving bowl so it doesn't get overcooked. My mom would just chuck everything in and that's absolutely fine. But I prefer a little bit of that sorrelly freshness as well. So I like to just cook it. So there you go, I've got some sorrel and the stalks with the wild garlic and the spring onions. And then I've got some of these leaves separately, which I'm also going to slice thinly, but I'm gonna to put to the side. So this is gonna go in the bowl. A little bit of this fresh is gonna go in the bowl as well. And the dill, is also, which I'm going to slice, is going to go into each bowl with the hot broth uh, poured over it. And then these wild garlicky spring onion uh, and sorrel stem bits are going to be cooked in the borscht uh, for about five minutes as well. So the veggies in the veggie stock have been, you know, steeping in this liquid for, I don't know, half an hour or so and I'm just going to take them out and compost them. Okay. It's just for Joe, so it's, you know, it's not loads, but you can obviously make a much bigger veg stuff as well you're cooking for a family. Uh, and then I'm just also going to take the this onion out. It's done its job now. 
I know, it's a bit of a weird thing to put a whole onion into a stove, but that's just how my mom makes it. I think it's just giving enough of its onionness without being too overbearing. So this is going to go into the compost, and then we're ready to put our sofrito in. So I'm going to put a little bit into Joe's. This is all veggie, so that's fine. And then I'm going to put the rest of it into the chicken stock. And you'll see the color is going to be beautiful. So first I'm going to go in to this one, give it a stir, and then I'm going to do it to the chicken one. And look at that color. It's beautiful, isn't it? And now I'm just actually going to put it back on. I'm going to put this one on and we're going to cook the potatoes in. And once the potatoes are almost done, we're going to put our wild garlic, sorrel stems and spring onions in. And we need to boil some eggs, I forgot. Let's boil some eggs. So I'm going to put quite a few of these potatoes into the meat one and then the rest of them is going to go into the veggie. And we're going to cook them, you know, uh, un until you can pierce them with a knife. So they're pretty much ready, but they won't fall apart too much if you cook it for another five minutes with all of the herbage in. Eggs, 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 eggs. I've got three eggs here. I'm going to put some, cover them with cold water, bring it to a simmer, and then we're going to try and not overcook them. But to be honest with you, in Ukraine they're properly hard boiled. Like there's no faffing around with your like jammy yolk or whatever. Like so if you overcook them that's fine. Okay, so cold water, eggs, bring it to a simmer and then we're gonna simmer them for about three minutes, Joe. I never I can never get it right perfectly. What, what would you say? Huh? What are you trying to do? I don't know, kind of like almost hard boiled, just with a little bit but not too jammy because I need to cut them into pieces. Six. Huh? Six. What? Boil for six minutes? You don't boil He's trying to sabotage me. I think the way that Joe does it, he brings it to a sim and then he switches it off. And keep them for four minutes? Well, I do it for like four minutes and turn the heat off. Leave them in for two minutes. Okay. So bring to a simmer, cook for four minutes, switch the heat off, put a timer on for another two minutes, and boom, you should have like a really beautifully kind of slightly jammy yolk, watch me completely mess it up and like have hard boiled eggs, which is absolutely fine as I mentioned before. So four minutes they've been boiling, let's see if Joe's method works. I'm gonna switch them off and put a timer for another two minutes and then we're gonna put them under cold water and hope that they are perfect for this dish. Okay, I'm just going to kind of like fish one potato out and pierce it, yeah, I mean, another five minutes and they'll be how I want them but you can pierce them through quite easily so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix all of this together that get together so this is wild garlic stems from the sorrel and some of the spring onion and I'm going to put you know most of it into the meat one because it's a bigger thing and then I'm gonna put the rest of it into Joe's vegetarian one And then I'm going to give it another five minutes or so and then the potatoes will be nice and tender. The wild garlic will also lose some of its harshness and the sorrel stalks will, um, you know, soften a little bit as well and won't be as stringy and fi fi fibery, fibrous. And, uh, and spring onions will also soften a little bit and it will be lovely. And then we can reinforce it all with the fresh flavors of sorrel and dill and spring onion and our eggs will be perfect by then so it's just going to be such a delicious thing. So the two minutes of the eggs sitting in the hot water without boiling has passed so I'm just going to grab a little container and put them in there. Uh, okay. And I am going to put them under cold water just so I can easily peel them and so they don't overcook. Did Joe's method work? What are they going to be like? They're going to be quite jammy, I can feel it already. It's not a bad thing. 
Actually, it's much easier, people. This is a good tip. Do it in the water. And then you don't get, you know, you can just get rid of all of the little bits that are clinging to it. And look, in Ukraine we would normally just chop it into small bits, but you can also do uh, half, almost like in a ramen. Yes! So this is very good. Okay, Joe, you win. <laughs> Your method is good. So lengthways into four and then chup, 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 chup into little egg jewels. Okay, I'm ready to serve, really. Okay, so before you serve it, just make sure that you taste it. Mine needs salt, so I'm just gonna add a good amount of salt. I'm gonna taste a little bit of Joe's one as well. This is better seasoned, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more still. And that's it. We're pretty much just give it a stir, give it another little taste. A bit more. And then this is good. Mm. Delicious, it sings. But wait until we put all of the fresh sorrel and dill and spring onion. Can't wait. Okay, so a little bit of sorrel or fresh kind of cut sorrel into each bowl. Then a little bit of spring onion too. And in here also a little bit of dill, a little bit of dill here. And then I'm gonna serve the veggie one first. So I'm just gonna grab this and look all of that hot liquid is going to just cook the sorrel underneath but it's not going to kind of overcook it okay so that's my veggie one and then i've got the meat one and i'm going to do exactly the same just pour it over just like that and then let's put the big pieces of egg into the veggie one because they don't have the meat and that's quite a nice thing and then maybe just a tiny bit more dill on top and just a little bit of this and some people put sour cream in as well but to me this is so fresh like I don't really want any dairy in it I just quite like it with the egg and if you don't eat eggs just leave it out it will still be like a really beautiful fresh soup to eat and then for the meat one I'm just going to put these kind of like pieces of chopped egg in here and as always just a little bit more dill and just a little bit more spring onion and we are ready to taste the bit of this meat one just get a bit of that sorrel in this is delicious bit of egg It's a little bit sweet, it's um, sour from the sorrel and it's extremely fresh and very light and just feels like health, you know, it feels really really good. I'm just going to taste the veggie one as well, okay, with a different spoon, so, okay. Mm. You know, I'm not, I'm not massively meat, meat, missing the meat here. Because I think it's all really about those beautiful herbs and the sorrel, so either version is good. So even if you are not a meat eater, I highly recommend you try the veggie one as well. I really hope that you enjoy it.